In this short tutorial, let's talk about the basics of Java optional class. We will look at what is available in the optional API and mention what is the best way to use Java optional. In fact, I will provide four solid tips to use Java optional class, the last one being the best. So be sure to stick till the very end. So why do we need Java optional? Let's take a look at the code on the screen. You see that there is a user factory class which has a method to return a user based on some logic, maybe fetching from the database. The problem here, of course, is that this returned user object can be null. The way the caller would call the user factory is to call it and then check for the return object to be null. If it is not null, then proceed to process the user. If the null check is not there, as you notice in the example, your application could throw a null pointer exception. The sad reality is that in many cases, the developers forget to check for null. And that's the reason the null pointer exception is the most common exception. So the question now is, how can the programmer who coded the get user API convey to the caller that null is a valid return type and that the caller should handle it? That's what Java optional class is all about. Java optional types make sure that the caller of the API is forced to think about null as a return value. This way, null pointer exceptions are avoided. It's of course entirely possible for the developer to bypass this recommendation by the API creator, as we will soon see. But then it will be a conscious decision by the caller. So let's begin with what is an optional data type. The optional type is a container for the actual object that needs to be returned. The name of the class itself is called optional and it can be used as a parameterized type, which means that it can contain any kind of object, any type. The big idea here is that if a method needs to return a value which can be null, then that method could instead return an optional with the value embedded inside it. Such a method must never return a null. When we think about optional types, it's useful to think from two different perspectives, creating an optional object and consuming an optional object. The API or method writer will be more interested in creating the optional and returning it back, whereas the API caller will be more interested in how to consume the returned optional. So let's start with some methods which are useful for creating an object of type optional. The first example here is the creation of an optional object from a non-null value. The way to do this is to use the static off method in the optional class. We need to be careful here because the value passed to the off method must not be null. Otherwise we are going to get a null pointer exception the very outcome that we want to avoid in the first place. But what if we explicitly want to convey that the value return is null? Remember, when we use Java optional, we don't ever return a null, but we return an empty optional, an optional with an empty value. The example code on the screen shows how to create an empty optional by simply calling the static optional.empty method. What if we do not know whether the value is null or not? Maybe we retrieved it by calling another method and we cannot be sure. That's the third way as demonstrated on the screen. We are using the off nullable method here. It's actually safer to use off nullable method rather than off method because it's sure to take care of the null. Now that's the first rule. When in doubt, use optional.off nullable instead of optional.off. That is sure to take care of the nulls. Now let's take a look at some of the ways to consume the optional object. When the caller calls the API and gets an optional object, how does the caller handle this optional? If you want to check if a value is present in the optional, then use the method isPresent. That's what you see on the screen, the is present being used. 
If you want to check if the optional is empty, use the method is empty. Simple. So those two methods are actually sufficient to make use of the optionals. Of course, there are better ways, but these two are sufficient. With this knowledge under our belt, let's now rewrite our factory method, the user factory method, which we had seen earlier to use Java optional instead. This should be straightforward. You can now see that in the get user method, off nullable is used to return the user object wrapped in an optional type. But note here that if we know for a fact that the user can never be null, then we do not need to use the optional. Simply return the user. In this case, because the user could be null, we are returning an optional of type user. The caller on the other hand uses the isPresent method to determine if the optional has a valid user and acts accordingly. Now you might ask, how does this exactly improve the code? After all, you're still using the if. Notice that the caller is forced to use the isPresent and the get methods to get the actual user and hence is forced to think about the null value. Having said that, the caller has the right to completely disregard this and do the following. Here you notice that the caller has simply called the get method without checking if the optional has a value associated with it or not. Now this is poor programming. And if you plan to do this for whatever reason, it's worthwhile documenting why you think the optional will always have a value. Otherwise, you will simply confuse other developers in your team. Now that's the second rule. Don't call the optional.get without checking if the value is present. Now let's take a look at another problem that can happen. Here you see the get user method is actually returning an optional object which itself is null. This could be a bug in the system and it could happen because of some condition but it's a disaster written all over. The whole point of optional use is to protect the calling code from null. By returning an optional object which itself is null, we have created a rather funny and ironic situation. And that's the third rule. Do not ever return a null as an optional. Return an empty optional object. Now Java's optional class was designed to be used as a return type for methods. There is nothing, however, stopping developers from using optional type as parameters to a method or a member variable of a class. Now note that the optional type is actually not serializable, so it doesn't really belong as a member variable of a class, and it should be avoided. And in a similar way, optionals should not be used as parameters in a method. This leads to overuse of optional and leads to unreadable code. Using an optional for just return types for a method is a great balance. Now that's the fourth rule. Use optional type only as a return type and not as a method parameter or a member variable of a class. Now we know how to use a Java optional. We know what it is, how to create them, and how to use them. Optional class also has a number of functional and fluent style methods that can be useful if you're a big fan of functional programming. We are not going to cover that in this lecture, but there will be a link in the upper right corner of your screen very soon, if it's not already there, which will talk about the fluent methods in the optional class. Stay tuned for that. Hope you find these four rules useful. And if you like this video, give a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more quality Java content.